Thank you for being here. You're here on a special day, I'll tell you that. Why is it not working, Jonesy? <laughs> they don't want to be locked into a, a house or an apartment. Got to follow the social distancing rule. And some nuff dicks were getting tested, they're going in and doing a shop. <laughs> what was that? COVID. I had it. Detective so, George Bennett. Yeah, he's a ballin, absolutely. Yours don't say hello to you like I don't know, I'm I'm actually genuinely embarrassed. I broke my back. A vertebrae or, or a portion? Spinal. I <laughs> think <laughs> Josie, just do that do that thing where you just put Bill's talking, let me see I can hear him first. Right, we've had we've had some trademark social distance podcast technical difficulties, but I think we're all right now. I've got three. Hey, bars. Don't don't involve us. You did. I've, yeah, I've, don't, Fra- France, France has France has had technical difficulties. I've got I'm I'm running not, three mistakes. three bars of four Gs now. We should be. I hope we're all right. But we're still in the internet. God's hands. Yeah. Hey boys, How are we? bloody How are we? proud. Couple of shit kickers from New Zealand. And you're in the world's biggest bike race, and you've both tasted the yellow jersey. Jeez, you must think your shit don't stink now, eh? Oh, mine's terrible after all the jowls. Fuck. I'll tell you what, if there's one, if there's one thing to bring you down a few pegs, it's just riding the Tour de France. Like, if it actually, you know, I came here hockey, arrogant, and now I'm just this humble, humble servant at the back, just getting my head kicked in. So it's quite good for me. We'll crash it on a the yellow first day on your pillow. That. Mate, do you not have these? Do you not have uh, Mitchelton Scott <laughs> bed spreads? Oh, what, what a, a homo. What a homo. Oh, mate, we we got Mitchelton Scott. This is, they, talk about, they talk about marginal gains, and it, for me, it starts with the bed spread. I mean, I go to bed each night on my Jumbo Visma. I mean, I tell you what, it's, it's synthetic. If there's a house fire, I'll be in big trouble. It's scratchy <laughs> as hell. Yeah. But it's jumbo. I bleed in yellow, bleed in black and yellow. Hey, Remember? I saw a, I saw a guy today riding his bike in Melbourne wearing a jumbo Visma top, and I almost wound the window down and yelled out, "Wanker!" Because you're not, cause you're <laughs> not you yell, meant to you wear the window down and yell, "Breach!" <laughs> well, you're Lock not meant down, to wear. What is what is it in cycling? You're not meant to wear team kit. Like I wear my Hawks jersey with pride, and that's normal in AFL. But what is it with you, bloody cyclists or recreational? It's not cool to wear yeah, team because, kit. Be. Because cycling's got all boutique now. You know, it's not about mm. like it's the same in Girona when the foot when the footy, football team plays. The whole town's wearing Girona football shirts. But hit, cycling's too boutique now. It's all about like Rafa kit and you know all this funky boutique kind of stuff just support your bloody team mate get it exactly it. bring it back mm. like if you want to wear the kit it just used do to it. be cool eh? like i remember i remember when i bought my first cycling kit was a was a factor remember that fak ta remember that team that was from i think it was from like maybe it was like an old custard pun or something i don't know what it was but it was 10 sizes too big and i used to just love it and then, then that became like you know then i had a rubber bank kit and it was like i had a cap and that became my team and all this stuff and then it was probably something changed about eight years ago. Mm. Where, hey, yeah, I, where I I ran onsite kit until there was holes in the chamois. Like I loved it. Mm. I had this onsite kit and I just ran it until you could see through it. But actually, it's quite when you think about it. It's quite. I'm quite chuffed about that. Those are our. That was our childhood mm. dream, you know. And now we're here at that race, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, has it been? Has it been? Ever- has it been everything you thought it'd be in the in the first week? Obviously, like you know, you didn't expect to get the jersey and stuff. But how's your first tour been, Bills? George crashed twice in the first stage, so things started pretty normal. Um, <laughs> oh, I like how he gave you tips going into the tour. He goes, "Listen, mate, just remember, there's going to be crashes. Yeah. There will be crashes, and fucking bang, <laughs> day one." <laughs> you know, I, can I tell you a real humiliating story about that crash? Um, yes. That, that please it's fuck, this is a real humiliator um so we we were like our boys were on that day it was crazy unbelievable stuff like you can't even describe like people at home go yeah, yeah slippery roads but like nah fuck that it was like it was insane slippery it was it was roads that hadn't rained for three months with oil and then extra sort of dishwashing detergent because there was a 
I don't know if I believe that or not, but apparently one of the caravan was a dishwashing nah, liquid. I heard, yeah, I heard that, but then I also heard it's olive trees. So a yeah. lot of the olives were coming oh. off. All the oil from the olive control, trees. Man. Don't you so dare you have, have a go at those caravan chicks, mate. They need to anyway. run, I don't know. They need to keep their bloody dishwashing liquid to themselves. But anyway, what happened was, so we, we were riding well, and like at one point we were, we were seven guys from Lotto, from Jumbo Visma, plus one guy from Quickstep, and the rest of the Peloton had crashed behind us. So like we, we could have gone on, we were right, we were always at the front, and we we're like, now nah, we're just trying to keep it together. And eventually we got a few teams together of like the GC contenders and said, let's try and, um, there's actually, this is just stupid. There's been like 40 crashes already. And no one from my, oh, like heaps of our guys have crashed, but me and Primoz had stayed upright. And we're like, before anything stupid happens, we're going to try and neutralize it. We got everyone together and and managed to like, for the first time in cycling history, get everyone together and be like, all right, let's, we're going to go easy down this hill. And everybody agreed, except suddenly at one moment, Astana start just riding full gas down the hill. And then they all crashed. And everyone was like, ah, oh, that's, karma you know no one felt too sorry for them and then we keep going super super easy and i was like just standing up on my bike like coming towards the bottom of the hill and i turned to talk to your teammate to chris jensen i was about to talk to him and say oh, thank fuck we neutralized this imagine doing this in the rain and i just hit this big diesel pile and i just high sided straight over the front of my bike and ate shit on a neutralized downhill and i was just I was sitting on the ground and I was like, it was one of those crashes that, you know, like crashes normally, like you crash and there's like adrenaline and, and you sort of get back up quickly and jump on your bike and then you get back to the hotel and realize, oh, oh that kind of hurt. Like, but this was one of those ones I was cold as hell and it just really like just hurts. Like everything just hurts straight away. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And then got back to the bunch eventually and everyone's like, well, how'd you manage that? That was neutralized. So yeah, <laughs> don't want to talk about it. I, I, I... <laughs> I'll tell you a couple of things about that neutralization. There was one guy in the race that was a real advocate for the for neutralizing that stage, and that was me, because I was out the ass, and and the the only way I was getting back was from that neutralization. Because, like you say, George, there've been so many crashes, and I got stuck behind a massive one—the one that took down Caleb um, and Degen Cobb and Jill Bear, where Jill Bear broke his kneecap, like a massive oh, one, yep. bottom bottom of the climb. We had a and, few uh, boys in there. Hey, we had two boys in there too. Walt and uh, Armand were in there. Yeah, and we were chasing like like madmen. I was with Caleb, and we we were we weren't going to come back. Like we weren't going to come back, but we came back because you guys had neutralized. And then I came just as I got back. I saw you high side at like bloody Mark Marquez in the first round of MotoGP. And then I and then I thought, oh, he's busted his collarbone because when I went past, I'm pretty sure I heard you say, oh, I've I've broken my collarbone. <laughs> and I was like, oh well, he's. He's out. It's going to be a shit rest day podcast without him. And then, um, anyway, we carried on and we started racing again. And then I saw George come back. I thought, oh, shit. Oh, good. He's he's fine, you know. He came past me at about three times the speed of the rest of the bunch and just locked up. And you were just sideways <laughs> coming off that highway. I was like, oh, here he goes again. Here. And, oh, no, he <laughs> saved it. He saves it. Beauty. He's all right. He saves it. Coming into 3K to go. Move. Who's down? George. <laughs> oh, I didn't crash first, so they just ate they, that one there. I just finally got back to Primoz, put them in the position, and I was like, oh, good, I can sit up. And I just started sitting up, and then everyone in front of me just ate shit. And I just went straight over the top. And that one, I just winded myself, and I was like trying to breathe. <laughs> then you pop your fucking head up, and you're like, are you all right, mate? I'm like, mm, mm. you're like, still started laughing at me, and I was trying to breathe. <laughs> lying on the ground he just pissed himself at me like hunched over like you know? <laughs> i was like i was giving you like the like the first aid tips like deep press bro deep press suck it and suck it and then he just started laughing and trying to breathe and laugh at the same time but oh, he's all right, well, so you got you enough. got kudos on the coverage bills because i think people could see you like trying to help george or you look like you're doing something and it's always yeah, when people see it on the TV it. and you're the one that gets all the chapeau, like, oh, geez, that Billy's a good bloke, when really you're just fucking laughing at him. Uh, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, me so, a dumbass for crashing twice. <laughs> so what was the fallout, George? What what injuries have you got? Um, 
Well, I'm nursing this this golf ball on the rib. I don't know if the YouTube viewers want to. I don't know if I really. My camera keeps doing strange things, but um, if you can see exhibit A, no, it's not really going to work on the camera, is it? <laughs> we'll just take yeah, your word. You got a golf ball in there. <laughs> yeah, so that's a rib that's clunking around a bit, um, and just classic skin injuries. But you know, it's weird because I'm I'm now going quite shit where I was going quite good before I came here. And the interesting thing that I guess you can see across the board of everyone, because so many people crashed in Nice, is that like, it's not necessarily, you know, you don't go to a hill now and go, okay, well, that's my ribs too sore. I could stab me when I breathe. I'm going to stop riding now. You're actually just empty. And it's like your body's just prioritizing, putting everything into trying to fix skin and bones and tissue before it worries about like oh i better refuel the legs and, so, the, and the, um, thing, the thing with yeah. this with this tour as well is that it's been such a hard first first nine days like really hard and mm. uh and like george says there's so many wounded soldiers after that first stage because mate there would have been it would have been 60 or 70 guys touched down that day and and big crashes high speed a lot of sore guys but then we went into there was, there was no room for respite. There was no sprint, easy sprint yeah. days or whatever. We were straight into the mountains the next day, and it's been such a hard nine days, and guys still recovering from that first stage and those injuries. You could already see it yesterday, man. Yesterday's stage was one of the hardest starts that I've had in the Grand Tour. Like, it went yesterday's 60K. Yesterday's in general was one yeah, of the Yeah, it was so okay. hard. I mean, like, yeah. that start that start was so hard. 60K racing, trying to guys trying to get in the breakaway. No breakaway and not easy roads, not flat at all. Hard, up and down, up and down, like in the gutter, super hard start. And then we hit the the first category, categorized climb after 60K and you could just see it straight away. Boom, 80 guys in the group here, you know? Like I reckon, was that actually just good suffering. for you? Were you actually like, were you actually, I mean, most people were shitting themselves coming into a 10K climb at 10% or whatever it was. But were you in a way like, oh, well, at least this will, this will line in the sand, a group here is going to form and this, this bullshit can end and we can... You know, because how hard was it before then? I mean, it was just like, you know, on the on the on the road that had the big duffers out the, you know, one k up, one k down, and then everyone was just swinging on the back, and Aru was out the back in the cars, and you know, just yeah, guys well, everywhere. For me personally, like, I mean, ideally for us, the as as a team, because it, you know, we still we were in the yellow jersey yesterday, and um, we would have loved to have taken that yellow jersey into the rest day today, and then we would have potentially got a couple more days in it. Um, given that well, you, could have, you could add another four or five days, couldn't you? Poten- yeah, potentially, yeah. It's not, so we it's not until Friday we go up here again, right? And yeah, an ideal, ideal situation for us yesterday would have been that the breakaway went well before that climb, and we could have done what we did the day before and let the break go. You know, give them a lot of leash. Mm. I don't know what your mm. guys' tactics were going to be, George, that day. Whether you wanted to win the stage or were you happy to to let us control we the game? To win if, yesterday. If, all right, so we, we would have lost we, um, it probably. <laughs> Well, yeah. So you fuck, <laughs> well, you fucked the, the whole show. The on the bus, it, it was um, it wasn't the tactics on the bus, but you know how it's we started up this climb, and then at one moment we were, we went full up sixty k. We hit this climb, and the bunch gets down to about twenty twenty five guys, and we had six guys there. And then Primo said on the radio, he said, "Fuck it, we go today. I want to win the stage." And then we just started going full gas. And I tell you, what was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was sit in the wheel of Walt Van Aert and guessing going the if yeah ask Yatesy actually he was sitting on my wheel about the the 5k before the last climb it was just you know if, if, if i wasn't there looking if i was one of those guys at the back of the radio i would have been screaming on the radio going tell them to get off the back of the motorbike but i could look up and i was like there's no motorbike there they're not motor pacing but he's just fucking riding like he's trying Mate, to kill everybody van van art he He's not. He's good, eh? He's not a bad bike rider, old yeah, man. He's not. He's not. Freak. He's not shit. I'm going to say it now on the social distance podcast. I'm going to go on a limb. I reckon he'll win the Tour de France in the next five years. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I heard Lance say that on his podcast. So I'll just. Oh, so you just him. stole? Yeah, fair enough. But he, he's um, often wrong. Uh, he's been wrong a lot in his podcast. So I'll yeah. say it. Hey, so that's how me and Buell's are holding up, Jonesy, but. You, um, I just saw before that you it's it's 11 30 at night and you're smashing a, a nice coffee. Um, so I want to know firstly, if people on YouTube can see that on the front of that, there's a big thing that says, Are you okay? And I think that's the people in your situation who are drinking uh, iced coffee okay. at 11, 
Let me, let no, me so know. are you okay? It's been a rough. It's been a rough week for you. I understand. Yeah. So, um, are you okay? Is a is it like a mental health organisation? I think they're chipping in to to help people out. But we're in lockdown still in Melbourne, mm-hmm. and our premier was like, "Hey, don't worry. On Sunday, it was all building up for he's going to tell us the roadmap to get out." Everyone's like, "Oh, thank fuck for that. I'm so over this bullshit." And then he gets up and he's extended it for another two weeks. So, hey, yeah. So oh. I've checked. I've checked in with our mate. And um, this is what he had to say about it all. F*** you, Daniel Andrews. F*** all you wankers wearing the f***ing mask and believing New World Order. F*** you, f***ing dog cunts. Your Matrix f***ing whores. F*** you and comment to this, you f***ing dogs. F***ing bang you in the f***ing head. That's yeah, pretty much, catch, that's pretty catch much where we're at. It's catching up on him, mate. Mate, I, yeah. I was talking to... Um, one of our sports directors today is from Australia. He's not. He's not from Victoria, but uh, he he was saying that something about in Victoria, you guys are at a hundred cases a day or something, and you're not, not going to you're not you're not going to come out of lockdown until it's to five cases a day. Yep, they basically Mate. said, all right, it's got to get to these numbers, and because we're people doing the right thing, we're relying on like the people that aren't to pull their heads in. So there's still people that are just going, fuck that. I'm not going to stick to these rules. I'll just do whatever I want. And then how are you ever going to get to like zero cases? Like mm. people are still going oh. to do the wrong thing. Like so we, we, bit... had, we had that dick, right? dick swinging contest a couple of weeks ago about how, how much, you know, Spain, are. Uh, what are you talking about? Spain was the worst mm. lockdown in the world. Mate, I, you're, you guys are up there now, eh? You're up there. This is, yeah, this well, is it's real. So on this... Uh, dare iced coffee, it gives you the steps, Bules. And I think this can apply to, you know, when you're busted at the Tour de France. Now, step one is you, you ring up a mate and you ask him, are you okay? Step two, listen without should judgment. Should we this amongst us while we should we follow these steps as we're, as we're going? Like, All right, so, Bully, I ring okay? up. Bully, are you okay? I'm emotionally stable. Um, I've got, I'm carrying a, a wee bit of fatigue. Uh, it's a yes, it's a yes or no question, mate. It's a yes, yes or no okay. question. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch in and say no. Just, just <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Well, if you this is like Legend you, of Ballad. It's like yeah. yeah. Well, I think if you answer yeah, you're okay. Well, then you can pretty much hang up the phone because I think this okay, is so more when you need to mop up off. the shit. Yeah. So George, um, you're not okay. Now I want to listen. No. Part two is to listen without judgment. So this is when you go on a rant, and I just go, okay. Well, George is sort of losing his shit here. I don't want to step in because it's all says on the dare bottle, you know, and then. Number three is to encourage action. So if you're going on another rant, I go, okay, well, yeah, that is starter guy. He's a bit of a muppet. Maybe you should just fucking have a go at him tomorrow. <laughs> and then number four, check in. <laughs> number four is you check in. So I go, how'd so you go with that muppet on the bike? Yeah, how'd you go? Uh, did you clean him <laughs> up on the bike? Yeah, yeah, you had a crate. Yeah, so it's pretty good steps. <laughs> and you get that on a iced coffee bottle. So, you know, good stuff. There you go. But you, hey, you know, got, what's the kit? The reason yeah, you're you're yeah. drinking that, Jonesy, is because it's 11.30 at night and you've just stepped off another podcast, haven't you? You've been cheating Mate, on us. We had an epic show. Uh, we had Cadell Evans, Andy Schleck and Stewie O'Grady talking about the 2011 tour and it was fucking awesome. So if you get the chance, check out um, the Detour podcast. But we wanted to talk about particularly that Galibier stage, stage 18, when um, Andy attacked with 60k to go and Stewie told the story about how they – you know, formulated this plan on the bus. And when they, they worked it out, when they first got the race book, they're flicking through and they go, oh, yeah, this is the stage we should do this. Then the morning of, they broke the news to the team and the team were like, no, nah, you're not doing that. Like, that's not going to work. Not in modern day cycling. And they stuck with it and pulled it off. And and then getting Cattell's perspective, like no one wanted to help him. So he just ripped it on the front for like 9K and that won him the Tour de France because at one point there, he was like over two minutes virtual behind on the – yellow jersey and um yeah it was for australian cycling it's probably the best ride or up there in the top five we've seen like mm. at the tour um oh. and then they said well, they've never actually spoken about that stage like they said they've caught up as mates but as you know like you don't talk about cycling when when you're in your free time hardly at all so yeah it's good insight but yeah i'm bloody i'm cooked boys i tried doing the social media stuff for twitter i reckon i got two days in and then i saw boom, that yeah, you, you went too hard right. too you, early. You had to you you accompanied like every kilometer with a shot of gin, 
and and just, <laughs> it just it wasn't sustainable. Nah, nah. Mate, re- then- re- regardless, those those couple of tweets, like the sh- the show's doing well. We haven't done an episode for a few weeks now. This is our first one since before the tour started. We haven't left the top ten of the charts. We're back up to number six again today. We've yeah. been like we've been between six. three and three and ten because there's been plenty of shout outs. We got more followers on on social media. We're up over a thousand now on Instagram. We're getting we're getting big time. The the commentators, particularly Matty Keenan, has done a a big service for for the show in Australia. Like he, whenever he sees you or or George on the on the front, he's always dropping the the podcast. Um, I have to say, so it made me smile when I heard that when, when he mentioned that Sam Bewley was doing a bit of social distancing as he was getting dropped off the off the arse end of the <laughs> That made me smile. <laughs> um, one, I've got a question for you, Bills, with the yellow jersey stuff, and this will apply to you as well, George. You know how they give riders a shitload of kit every day, like with the yellows, like they must give Yates the arm warmers and all that sort of stuff. Are you gonna try and hit him up for some memorabilia stuff? Because surely Yatesy doesn't need all that knickknacky shit, or is he gonna hoard it all? You there, Sam? I don't know what Yatesy would do. He's not. He's not really a. Um, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I'd, no, I'd be hitting him really up for one of those yellow oh, jersey yeah. face. Yeah, I'd be hitting him up for like a get- face mask or something like limited edition. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I like one of the ha- hands off a line or something. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to ask him, but hopefully he listens to the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would. If I if I was a teammate, I'd say, mate, can you sling us, like, just get something to, yeah. to frame. And you're like, Kenny, he'd love it. Imagine giving yeah. that to Kenny for, like, his birthday or something. A it would be good yellow something, stock right? or something. Yeah. You, you... <laughs> just one one for his birthday one for christmas cut and covered and then here's another point so 2014 giro when bling had the pink jersey he gave all his teammates a pink ipad mm. um are you gonna get to the end of the tour and be like you know yatesy mate you had it for four days we're on the front surely yeah, you can get us a trinket What's well, if anything, you should be giving Yates you should give me a yellow iPad or our team a yellow iPad because we've had to ride the last two days anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> well only because you chose to. Good. What, yeah. No. Well, what do you reckon four days is worth? I reckon four days would be worth at least an iPod or something. Rolex, maybe. Do they make iPods? Can you still buy an iPod? Like, does anyone just go out there and get like a an iPod that doesn't do anything? I don't think... You can't do anything with it. Just play music. When That's I, when I moved, you remember when we moved to part, my apartment last year, George? You came around and gave me a hand, and we were. Yeah, you had, I, I moved apartments last year, and uh, a few of the boys came around and gave me a hand. And uh, mate, I went through one drawer. I found like four or five iPod shuffles in there. Yeah, I might bring that back. That'll be done. worth a shitload in the future. I reckon, like you know, those old school, um, like the 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 big thick ones that were like thirty gig and. And then you used to, everyone used to call them, um, they used to, you could name your iPad or your iPod on um, iTunes and everyone thought they were hilarious and would call it the Titanic so that when it was sinking, they could say the, you know, the, do you guys have that one or was that just a New Zealand thing? And oh, that's what that's the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that when, when you put it on iTunes and what? it would synchronize, it would be like the, the Titanic because you'd call your iPod the Titanic and then it would say the Titanic is sinking. And then oh, oh, stink. Stink, yeah, yeah I get it. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's fucking, fucking wounding, shit. Eh? Yeah. yeah. There you go. The limit of the show. My head was that in 2001, so. <laughs> All right, I've got another question for you, Bules. So I want to show you like a photo, and this is obviously Bully on the front. How much when you're on the front at the Tour de France and you see the cameras and all that sort of stuff, surely your brain's going, fuck yeah. This is the biggest race in the world, and I am getting some primo TV time here. Yeah, and you know what, Jonesy? Like this year, obviously with with the COVID stuff, there's less there's less people on the side of the road, and I'm, I mean, I don't have the 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 statistics from all the broadcasters on my computer here, but I reckon there must be a shitload more people watching it on TV. And yeah. I, like I, I did an interview uh, just earlier, and. Um, 
but I basically got asked the same question. And like when you're a kid, you know, you, you watch the Tour de France and you always remember the teams that had the yellow jersey. Like there's there's been guys that have had the yellow jersey for one day, two days. You know, guys who have won the got worn the yellow jersey under different circumstances. But you always remember those guys and you always remember those teams. And I was like thinking to myself, like, fuck, you know, yeah, this is me. And I know my, my folks are at home watching. My mum's bloody, mum yeah. and dad are up watching it. Like, so yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I was thinking that. Do you, do you <laughs> think do you think that as well, George, when you're on the front and, you know, you're at the tour and the bloody camera? Because you're, you're going to have, a, you know, couple of solid weeks of coverage coming yeah, it's, up. It's weird for me because I, I definitely have thought that in the past. I definitely remember sort of, you know, attacking or something and then thinking like, wow, this is a Tour de France, I'm attacking and or I'm there with the best guys and this and that and whatever. And I remember getting this like goosebump feeling. But I, I genuinely, for some reason, don't have that this year. And I was thinking about, I was talking about this with my teammate yesterday, who's also done a couple of tours. And I think... I think it's the crowds because before, you know, you get like these guys screaming and there's this huge atmosphere and there's there's people outside. You, you look outside the bus and you, um, you know, there's just thousands of people there and everyone trying to get your autograph and there's this whole atmosphere that builds it up. And for me, a little bit, I had this sort of like, uh, sort of, you know, maybe not sort of Borgos vibe, but like Tour de Lan kind of thing where we were, we were there do a job this is you know from from kilometer 95 to this this is your job and it was just like it has, it has a far more business feel about it this year where and i feel like i'm missing a little bit of the magic but that said i mean maybe it's also because like we're just running a real high pressure situation that you know maybe i've just or i've just i don't know hopefully not i'm not just jaded and you know, don't care. Well, yeah, you, you, are, you, you, you've, you've got like you guys have got such a focus now on, on like mm. the whole the whole race, you know, and also like I mean, you, obviously the the pandemic's playing its part, and um, with the restrictions on the climbs, like you can't you can't drive up the climbs. I think they closed the road twenty four hours before the stage, whereas they used to do it like six or seven hours before. So people can't drive up. You can only access the climbs by foot or bike. Um, mm. But also, it's it's not the holidays anymore. You know, July is the summer holiday. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And and so everybody's back at work. And I did actually notice it on the Pira Sword uh, on Saturday, George. Like the, the crowds were exponentially bigger, weren't they? Because it was a weekend. Yeah. Did you see Catelyn up there, up the top? No, nah, I didn't see her. No, nah, uh, I saw. So I saw your Instagram post. You trying to give her a high five, and she she was the what the brains of the operation and realized, hey, George. Not in the bubble, mate. Not in the bubble. Can't touch it. Yeah. She it's just left your hand. She just left your hanging. <laughs> you you want to like give her a kiss and you know you you haven't seen her for two weeks or whatever. And then oh, are you gonna stop on the side? Are you gonna stop on the side of the road and hump her leg or something? Yeah, they're like hi. Like you know when you're like a ten year old hi. <laughs> hey, speaking of Caitlin, she's had some bloody good press, mate. Uh, with the the shoes, we've got some examples yeah, here. Oh, look, that's a good photo. Um, that's a good shoe. Look at the bump on the side of my foot. Um, yeah, do you know what a real disappointing story about Caitlin's shoes is that she made me an awesome new pair for for France. And when I cra- when I did this that humiliating high side crash, um, I managed oh, you- to rip the cleat off the bottom of the shoe and put a hole through the side of the foot, through the through the side of them. And I cannot for the life of me think how that happened. I mean, oh, I didn't no. know I crashed. I didn't, don't, didn't those break, shoes, didn't do anything. Those shoes that you had on, um, I, I saw them. You, should, you guys should, probably everybody that watches the show knows about Caitlin's um, sho- shoes. But if you if you don't, go to Caitlin Field to find out on Instagram and, and find, Hang on. find her Hang on, look at this. There it is. www.caitlinfieldoffineart.com for those that are listening, not watching. Check out her shoes. They're bloody awesome. Um, and the, the, the set that she did, Painted up for George that you that you buggered in the first stage. They were fucking cool. But what's the significance of those hands on the on the heel? That sign language. Is that these That's, ones? No, uh, no, nah, 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 nah. Next through. one. These yeah, ones. But on the across. back of them. Well, oh, these oh, ones. Yeah. But yeah. on the back, there's hand signals, and on the left foot was G. It's the the sign language for G, and the sign language for B on the other foot. Right. But Just they, raising awareness. They, like not to, but not to sound a bit stupid here, but they can't see that. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but can. It, it, sign language is for deaf people, you dumbass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! Oh my god! Uh, that'd have to be one of the dumbest moments Julie's had on this show, eh? But that can't see that. It's, I guess. I guess what in Australia Sunday was Father's Day. Yesterday was Father's oh, Day. Yeah. Oh fuck me! <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. You know how we were saying. You know, we were saying that people are copping shit for wearing team kit. What if we got Caitlin to design a social distance podcast kit? Yeah, yeah, I think that we need to we need to make this thing pay. Anyway, we're not we've got to can't. We got to suck it. We got to start breaking some bread, boys. Yeah, make some merch. All right, I'll get make some more. <laughs> Caitlin, yeah, don't worry. Caitlin will get a clip. Yeah, yeah. you pay Peter to get monkeys, eh? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if if you uh, want to send in some suggestions, um, we can just start feeding in some ideas on the show each week. But uh, yep. Caitlin will probably just do and, what she wants anyway. So Yeah, then, 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 we'll, ask, sorry, we'll, say, then we'll ask Caitlin if she's okay with doing it. But should, should we, uh, has she ever designed a cycling kit before? Yeah, she has. She's designing a, um, one at the moment that, that, that's got a very big one. For New Zealand, um, that will come out at some stage. We'll talk about well, that she, when it's out, though. When it's all well, finished. she can shelve that because she's got a bigger project. We need to get some bank. <laughs> Do you know what shelving is in New Zealand? When we talk about you can shelve something. No. Okay. Well, maybe we don't want to go into that in the family podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, oh, did you see in other news? Because you guys are in the bubble. Did you see uh, what happened with Novak Djokovic today? Yeah. Smack them, smack someone with a ball or something. Yeah, hit her in the throat. <laughs> the what? line woman. They, they, okay? booted her, they booted him, eh? Oh, did you oh, do that... it on purpose? No. He, he, well, he, he was frustrated. You know what I was going to do, Bills, and I forgot to put it in? I could probably do it in post. I was going to put in that scene from that other famous tennis movie, Seven Days in Hell. Here we go. Championship point. It appears he just whispered to himself, this is how we do it. The hit Montel Jordan song that Aaron sung backup vocals on this year. Oh. Oh, jeez. This is not good. You just hope he's all right. You knew right away he was dead. My lord, I've never seen anything like this. It was one of the great tragedies of all time. And technically, it wasn't the impact that killed him. But the impact gave him a heart attack, and that killed him. So if you ask me, did Aaron kill him? I'd say kind of. Oh, the, yeah. the last time that a Lions person was cleaned up in, a, in an event, <laughs> he actually killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. Eh? His murderer. <laughs> um, so, Thank yeah. you, Grant. No, nah, it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's a tennis movie story. I'm thinking of with Hugh Grant. Wimbledon. Ah, uh, Wimbledon. No, oh, is he in a tennis know. movie? No, this yeah, was a pi- yeah. this was a piss take movie with Andy Samberg. Oh. It's called yeah. Seven Days in Hell, and it's about a game at Wimbledon that went for seven days. <laughs> yeah, that might be my afternoon. Eh? How how hectic's a rest day? Like, um... oh yeah, I was going to ask you what it, what's what's happened today on the rest day. Oh mate, so I don't know, I think it was probably the same as ours. I woke up. I didn't send an alarm and woke up to someone telling me I had to go to a COVID test. So that was a rude awakening, getting a, getting rammed in the head first thing in the morning. And then then we had like Brecky Road, looked at like setting up some, changing some stuff on bikes and mechanics, straight into lunch. And then I just had media all afternoon, just had different interviews with, you know, and we get real strange media. Actually, I had some media this morning as well, but I get like, um, you know, I only get like Belgium and Dutch media. And um, because I think that, you know, the team obviously chooses who they talk to and that's their biggest thing. So we just have phone calls afternoon and then just finished my last interview and sat down with you two dickheads. So how long, mm, yeah. how long did you, uh, how long did you write for today? Hour 40. What did you do? Yeah. I did an hour 10 on the road and then I did 30 minutes on the, on the home trainer. Why is it raining where to... you are? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to sweat. I wanted to sweat. I, the, when you're a big engine like me, 
when I say big engine, I mean big in stature. Um, I uh, I need to sweat if I don't, especially after it's been a real hard nine days. You know, otherwise the, the body just shuts down. People off, you know, people would have probably heard of that theory of you know in Grand Tours, people's body sort of shutting down on rest days. First day is not. I always first heard rest that. Day is not normally so bad. The second day, I've always had some shockers, but. I want to just cover my bases. Flat, fat stage tomorrow, but did now ten on the road easy, and then I just did like thirty minutes, sort of prog- progressive. Leg warmers on, long sleeve on, just get the sweat out, get the water out. Do you know what's quite famous in cycling is the San Buley Stage Sixteen shocker? Like it's actually mm. renowned. Like it's it's talked about about, and then followed by this dramatic comeback for a Stage Eighteen blinder, where you where you mm. creep after the second rest day. Who makes the final doors, collection fight for your life to the line and then comes out the day the next two days and rides front group with the climbers with, with you know if there with 20 guys so um i think you're doing it wrong i think you need to sweat less save some of that sweat for stage 16. yeah what is stage 16 this year actually i don't know just looking through the road book have you do you know what blew my mind just before when i was sitting i'm sitting on my bed looking through the roadie have you seen where we are like I was talking to John yeah. about this, we're on the. We this is so nuts. Like you get on a bus, and then you, you just you know I don't know. Last night we had this four or five hundred k transfer or something. It was a long way. And then I just looked on the map. I'm like, holy shit, we're we know we need to see, and we're on the yeah. other side of France, and we're we're in the middle of Up nowhere. North. Yeah, La Rochelle. We're in La Rochelle at the moment. It's a beautiful area. Yeah, beautiful area. I, I was saying to Jones George, but one, one year, yeah, one year I was at the tour when we were with Fox, and I thought, oh, shit, I wonder where we are on the map. I thought we were in the um, bottom left of France and we were in the top right. <laughs> you couldn't like, tell what Way off. And same thing, you just get so caught in the bubble of start-finish lines. Like, I had yeah. no idea. And it no. took me uh, 10 years to work out where the Alps were compared to the Pyrenees. I just... Never paid any attention. I, I've started. I, well, first about the road book. I've got a rule. I, I no road books in the room, so I always leave my road book on the bus. Um, and but I started. What I've started doing is when we when we're racing, and I got this idea from Chris Jill Jensen. Actually, it's a great idea. When you race through some parts of France, you're like, "Holy shit, this place is beautiful, man! It'd be awesome to come back here on a holiday or something." I start to. I'd look then on the map and pin it on my on my iPhone on my map or whatever, all these little spots that you know where I want to go on holiday. So I've got like oh, really? yeah, three or four hundred pins in my um, iPhone maps, and whenever I try to find the the local dentist, well, I can't find, well, find it. Just on that, Sam, what are you looking for in a holiday? <laughs> yeah, t- depends what mood I'm in. Water, water. I want water. Oceans. Good weather's key, eh? Yeah, I'd probably go to the Maldives. Yeah. Oh, well, funny you mentioned that. If How anyone's listening to this, well, I don't know. What do we have to actually do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need. We're, I had this discussion. With oh, hang on, day. hang on. We've got, got a special a guest. We've got a bite. Yeah. Ah, bite. <laughs> oh, he's finally yeah. decided to join the show. Um, the Dazzler. That's it. We got Daryl Impey here. Does? So all hey, the George, time. this is the first time I've seen you in about nine days. Huh? Hey, Daryl, are you running a um, Mitchell and Scott bed spread or is that just a, a Jumbo Visma setup? Yeah, that's... that's uh, How jealous that are you? Wow. <laughs> you know, it's like one of those guys that's got to show you he's got everything and then like, ah, ah let me not start with George so early <laughs> in the day. <laughs> <laughs> We're only nine days in, eh? It's like, well, this um, the first time, well, this is the first time I've seen you in the last five days, actually. So, uh, yeah, we we were, we good, were uh, well. That's not a good sign. We were talking about the start uh, yesterday's start before Daryl. How hard the start was, and a lot of people won't know this, but Daryl punched like on the first climb of the day, and that oh, start bullshit. was that was ferocious. That start, like I, I was on. I think most of the people were just on the limit, holding the fucking wheel. And poor old Imps is changing his wheel, back in the cars, trying to get back. To, it's a bloody good effort to come. It did better than Aru to get back to the bunch anyway. <laughs> oh, Aru. <laughs> Jeez, he, weighed, he, he was actually the watch, in the man. bunch by that stage. 
He was pulling a bunch <laughs> at that stage, I think. Jeez, how did you get back? That was horrific, eh? Oh, like, well, that's one of those. No, just hold on the cop. Because don't tell anyone. <laughs> well, just hold on the cop when you get. You got one arm longer than the other, though, don't you? Exactly. No, it was a quite a chase. Eh? I'll tell you that much. There's not too many. Uh, you know that you notice in the race that there's actually a couple good teams out there, like teams that actually like, oh, I saw him puncher. That would be like pretty shit to puncher there. So like, they give you a hand. But then, like, it's always the always the French teams. They don't even offer that. You know, they kind of, like, let the wheel go. It's like, oh, I'm going to see if you can get past me now, you know. But um, Jumbo was really good. Um, who else was good? Astana was pretty good. Movistar gave, gave me a little bit of a little hand there, you know, behind just slipping through the wheels there. But, uh, you know, and obviously my team was amazing, you know, just amazing. <laughs> Bring hey, Daryl, we just want to know, mate, are, are you okay? Okay, you I'm okay, on. mate. I'm okay. Yeah. That's good. Hey, I look for the hey, having the having board. the yellow jersey, having the yellow jersey in the team it must have brought back some pretty bloody emotional memories for you, having worn it yeah. in 2013. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, it was a shame for you to actually because like the harp was different this year because, you know, obviously no fans and no media around the buses and things like that, but you know, you still have that privilege and that honor in the team to 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 have the jersey. So, um you know, just thinking back to those moments when I had it, it was like, you know, everything kind of lined up and, you know, like now we're saying it's like seven years later, it just shows you how difficult it is to achieve. I mean, we've had quite a bit of success at the tour, but um, even saying that, to get the yellow jersey, like the course has to be right, everything has to be right for you even mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to do it. So like, um, yeah, it was good. And it was good for us as a team. I think, you know, we've had a particularly – Tough season, I think everyone has, but um, for us to bring the morale up and to have those, uh, you know, be at the front of the world's biggest park race and having a guy like Yates who's always up for it, um, that was cool for us. Um, and, uh, and like you say, it, it changes your life, doesn't it? It's like you got a swimming pool now in Girona. Well, that said, <laughs> I moved up. To, I moved up to uh, I'm out of the you know the the digs in Girona. You know, I got out of the like, the, the bad areas, and I'm actually now in the the, the Lani area up the hill there. You know, the guys by the football stadium and that. So yeah, we've got a pool, uh, three levels. Um, so now I'm rolling in it. Ever since that day, I've actually come up a notch. I actually bought a new car last year too. Um, so Jesus. things are going really well. The lawnmower, it's electric lawnmower. So I've even gone up in that <laughs> standard, and actually. I mean, it's a saltwater pool too, so it's it's like, I mean, I don't have to carry on. And I bought Wait, a lounge I, suite for outside, like a nice outdoor what color, place to sit. So, what colour is the pool at the moment? Blue, blue. Al's got it back to blue. We had a bit oh, of a crisis. Well, you know what happened? Al's and no, I. No, we don't. Now that now, now that I've been the you know, a man. What's now, happened with the internet? <laughs> oh, we lost them. Oh. It's like just conversations the, over. Yeah, you're yeah, right. so you have to start the pool again, mate. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. So, like, I was and I, like, obviously, I've been the man of the house, but now I'm not there. So, like, now I gave her a few chores, and the pool's gone green. So she's like, "What do I do?" And I'm like, oh, "What have you done?" And she's like, "I've done nothing." I'm like, "Okay, but well, if you've done my instructions, it should be okay." But anyway, <laughs> so it's been quite fun, like over FaceTime and all these things, trying to tell her how to backwash and do all these things. And then she actually appreciates what I do back home, you know, and she's like, what are you doing down there by the pool? And I'm like, I'm, I'm cleaning the pool. And she thinks I'm doing nothing. So you, you could, she's actually realized you could sense it, how much I actually do. You could sense it um, probably uh, in the last well. week. It's going to it's going to escalate you know, to the whole. Now, cause now I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Internet dramas. I'm saying, if you could sense that it's going to escalate at some point in the last week, like, Dal, I'm at the fucking Tour de France. I can't, I can't be there to do that. Like, Jesus Christ, just give me it's a like, fucking break. It's like episode one of this, trying to get Novi to get his microphone to work. Hey, um, I got there. I got sent a big curveball from Caitlin for pre-stage start, and and she's uh, sending me a. She's like, oh, I haven't paid the parking this month, and I'm sitting there, about to start like stage four of the Tour de France, trying on the bus, trying to pay a fucking parking bill. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the beauty of being single. I got no responsibilities. Yeah, well, that's it. But you won't be single for long, Bills. Like if you if you keep uh, riding on the front, 
you know, look after yourself, um, you should be right. Hmm. Particularly when you tell Tour de France war stories when you get back, you'd be sweet. Bloody yes. You, 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 in he, fact, that when he moves this well, be, after that, he's going to move up to Montalivi. He's going to move up the hill. That's your Tinder profile right there <laughs> <laughs> on the front. I was saying, I was saying to the boys the other day, we were in the group hitter, and I, not not to sound, oh, this I don't think this will sound sexist, but um, <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> well, let's find out. Go on. Yeah. We'll Is find this out. live? <laughs> <laughs> when I was riding up the hill, and you know this. You, just the spectators and everything, and there's some nice looking girls. And I was like, saying to one of the guys, oh, it'd be good if you had Tinder on your Garmin so you could just like swipe right as you went past. <laughs> hey, um, Daryl, I've, I've got a quick one for you. We were asking before is there an obligation to buy the other guys on your team a present for you know defending the jersey, or is that because I remember Bling one uh, year gave all the guys those pink iPads for having the jersey. You're going to get something yeah. from Yatesy this year, you reckon? Or And did you get the uh, guys something in 2013 or not? Just saved nah. it for the pool. So, I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll uh, admit it. But, um, you know, uh, uh, I think I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's just got to come from the, the rider himself. I don't think it should be as an expectation, um, you know, judging by, I guess, how long, how hard, how what's happened, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Um what should be done or shouldn't be done. Um, it's like an unwritten thing. I think if you feel the need to do it, then do it. But uh, don't do it if you feel you have to do it. You know, if you get what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, what would you, you do? You gave, you gave everyone a, um, a yellow jersey, though, didn't you, Daryl? Didn't you order yeah, some yellow jersey? Yeah, yeah, all got a yellow yeah, jersey. Yeah, so that's, yellow jersey. that's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Mate, yeah. I, I, I mean, remember. Was I was just I, hoping for a pair of socks. At, at this stage, he just wants a yellow pair of socks. Yeah, so that's right. One to Kim birthday and the other one for Christmas. That's right. But I remember I used to get, when the morale was down on, on the Green Edge team, I used to buy presents for the riders all the time. I used to buy oh, mugs yeah. and shirts and trinkets and it's just sort you're, of like I am, Daryl. I would have been a like good GC hey, rider. Yeah. We, we miss guys like you, Jonesy. The way we do. There's a bit of a culture gap there that really? uh, hasn't been filled in yet. Yeah. And Chris is trying to be that guy, but he's just can't. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember a famous tour a couple of years ago when Chris's jokes were landing flat and Matty Heyman had a fucking gut full and he, he didn't crack any gags for the second half of the tour that year. I remember that. <laughs> and then yeah, by Paris, just, he was back, but. <laughs> after a few, few years. Oh, look, yeah. Matty can also take you pretty personally a lot of things, though. So, um, you know, even... How's, even like, how's Heyman transition into the DS role? Is he... Great DS. Yeah. No, he's a great DS. Yeah, Very attention good. to details, just like he was as a rider, you know. He knows the routes, he knows the course, he knows what's happening with the wind. Um, he's still quite calm on the radio. Uh, he still gets pissed off pretty easily, but not, not like at the riders. But... Uh, you know, he hates things not going the way they should go. Um, you know, mm. I could see when was it the start of the tour when we got we got a bit lost, they built somewhere or we, we cocked something up, and then you could see he got flustered pretty quickly. He's like, Guys, just chill, just chill. We're like, man, we we are chill. No one's no one's even moaning yet. Like it's just gosh, just to relax. <laughs> okay, it's, it's okay, it's for the fine, so you know, like man, <laughs> we're not under pressure yet. We're not even racing yet. <laughs> it's okay. But but that's like you know, he, he loves it. Yeah, he's yeah. Aw- he's an awesome DS man. Like you say, there's like he he's so well organized. Like he he's got he's he's the master. He's got he look. There's an ap- application we use called Valor Viewer, which gives us like insights and shows the whole course and wind direction and everything. And most teams use it, mate. He's like he studies that thing like the Bible, and he is just on the ball. Like when we have our meeting before the start, there's no there's no there's no uh, nothing missed with Heyman. He's buddy. He's awesome. And he is. He's really calm on the radio. He's calculated. He thinks about things. He's a. Uh, and I tell you what, he's looking fucking good. He he's. I think he's running about race weight at the moment. Really? Yeah. Bills well, they're like all. The would... that, from Bills' story right now, you'd think that uh, there's a threat hanging over the team that someone's going to have to ride the front. You know, for many K's and Bills is just putting in his bid, hoping that Heyman's listening, so it's not him. <laughs> he does listen, I think. <laughs> Hey, who, hey, George, on your team, who drives the strategies and all that? Like, how much buy-in should does we, uh, Roglic and that have? Should we let Oops go if he wants to? Yeah, let Sorry, him go. Before, yeah. If you want to 
thanks for popping in, Imps. You can go and have a nap if you want, unless you want to stay. You're more than welcome. Oh, I like, right. yeah, I like having him. Well, well I can stay. Yeah. I don't know how much longer you're going to be. I mean, right. you can't talk to anywhere, for so much for so long. We're, we're between an hour. Now. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a nap soon. Oh well, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah who drives the tactics george who's the well, we, el capitano we um like like i said yesterday we we were just cruising and we're like okay we're not gonna ride we're not gonna um do anything and we're just gonna you know drop them off at the bottom and then after 60k roglitz said on the radio fuck it i want to try win and then we just went you know we improvised so we we have the you know the the Jumbo Visma version of Heyman is Christian Newman and he's you know he spends more time on, on Velo Viewer than than you spend on bloody YouTube and um <laughs> that's what is that what you're gonna say <laughs> <laughs> and um but yeah it's it's interesting looking at like what riders would make good directors you know like there's probably a few that I look around in the peloton now. And you go, oh, yeah, they could transition well, whereas a guy like me would just be the worst director, you know? Just <laughs> no idea what's going on. Just looking at the road book, going, oh, we're in this part of France, going, fuck. Yeah. You know, we oh, were shoot, we're at the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so, your boys. So, George, you actually, George, you actually ride around the peloton looking at guys, you go, that's guys' potential BS. I don't look for that. I, go, oh, you know I don't think that. I mean? like, there's a guy that gives a vibe, you know? There's definitely a vibe, like I could potentially transition and you know and, and you know you just know those guys that could could do it could you imagine there's but, george assessing ds's and there's buell's thinking of tinder like you know it's just <laughs> fucking chaos yeah he will be a great ds <laughs> yeah i reckon <laughs> i'd ride for buell's any day oh yeah <laughs> oh shit hey do you reckon we've given the, the listeners what they wanted? This this episode's had a lot of hype around today. We've had many messages from people saying they can't wait for the rest day edition. Well, I'll ask you a question that the fans want to know. Um, there's a photo that was circulating from two days ago, which was this one. Uh, and it was all about, you know, oh, the fans are not doing the proper protocols and all that. Is this something that the riders are worried about um, with, you know, obviously there's fucking 9,000 cases or something? Or is it just like, you know, whatever? Uh, well, I'll go first. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is that the Tour de France is synon- synonymous to spectators. For sure, there's less spectators at the moment, like we touched on earlier, because of the restrictions, the fact that it's not the holidays, um, all that stuff. But when we get to, to the climbs, and there are people there, and, and there were a couple of days in the weekend with, with, with large crowds, like we we love it. We, we there's no doubt about it. We love having the fans there. But man, we really, really do ask that those people do the right thing and be responsible. Wear your bloody mask. Wear your mask. All you got to do is wear your mm. mask. You can be there, social distance mm. as much as you can. But like you're looking after the health of you. you you're looking after the health of the people around you, and you're looking after the, the health of the bike riders because we are coming past so close. And everybody wants this race to go to the finish, and everybody wants this season to continue for the for the rest of the season. So it is. Really important that people do wear their masks when they're up there, you know. And you're more than welcome to come, put your bloody mask on, and then everybody will see the end of this race. Well, I saw um, uh, what's his name, bloody uh, who's the bore of Sargon. I saw he in the media said, cool. just don't don't come to the race. Um, you know, watch it at home on TV. Like, could you imagine a French family of five? They pack their picnic basket. They're just about to head out the door. And someone opens a laptop and they're like, hey, uh, uh, forget it. Sargon said we can't fucking go. And they're always like, oh, okay. Like, you well, know. It was a shaky yeah. start because some of these measures are like a bit – like, for example, there's no one at the in the first 200 metres of the race, right? So, like, in Nice, we went up and you have this sort of bizarre experience where they, like, hype up. The, you know, you do your sign on and they go, okay, this is – uh, Primoz Roglic, he won this, 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 and then normally the crowd do a big cheer, and there's just nobody standing there. You know, there's a couple of, and you sort of like put your hand up, like, oh yeah, wave. And then there's no one in the area. You roll out, start grid, and then about 300 meters out of Nice, there was just this corridor of riders, of of spectators, and we all rode straight to that and went, wow, you know, that just completely undid all the work that stopping yeah. all these people coming to the start village did. But like, but like on the other hand, what do stop two hundred? Yeah, and like two hundred k of road, like the well, the, the where the spectators are and the amount of spectators there is, that's that's up that's the government the government to do, handle. I think 
you know they, they have their rules in place they have the the police that are policing that um so the people that are allowed there in the appropriate places just wear, wear a mask simply that simply that yeah mm. man it's quite simple we pass the pellets on it takes us five seconds to pass them five or ten seconds mm. so for those five or ten seconds that we're passing them put your yeah. mask on and that's all it is. We're not asking you to wear it from freaking eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at bed and at mm. night. Just those ten seconds we pass. Um, the other thing is we've got staff members also on the climbs that are handing out uh, handing out bottles and things like that. You, you know, we don't want to put them at risk. They that risk mm. then comes into our bubble. So it's the same thing. We we're all trying to adapt and do our best. But the best part, <laughs> the funniest thing was the <laughs> like I think on stage three. We stood up, we went on the, before the stage started, like, um, I think it was the first day, Adam maybe was in yellow, or maybe, I can't remember. Anyway, we got on the st- stage. The crowd was behind us. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. And yeah. we were... <laughs> we, were <laughs> we were... We were looking into the parking lot. <laughs> there was not a person in sight and then they call your name out and you actually don't know what you should do because like Tom, Tom you stick your hand up to go like wave to the people like this is who I am <laughs> it was like the most awkward thing ever it was like yeah. I couldn't understand it. it was like there were people behind us I turned around that day from the back yeah we, we were I looking out we, like, we were waving at the team buses and behind and then we're yeah. like no oh, there's, there's no one here they've done a great job today Waving at the team buses, turned around. Oh, there they are. Hey, boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Uh, no, well, and, fingers and, crossed. And, yeah, everyone's doing. Everyone's doing bloody well. The ASO, the the everyone, the government, uh, and the teams especially are doing. We're we're not leaving any stone unturned. We're doing doing an awesome job with our bubble. Um, and yeah, all we can ask is the spectators just just like it says ten seconds. Put your mask on. Mm. It was a it's actually cool. It's it's, um... it's cool these days. It's it's the style. If you don't wear a mask, you look like a fuckwit. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's like wearing it a team start kit. Because the eh? they had they had a couple of guys out before it even started. Yeah, a couple of staff members. Um, I reckon this this rest days COVID tests will throw up some dramas. I mean, the fake tests, uh, the fake positives we know are. Yeah, that's the worry. A real. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, mm. well fingers it's hope- crossed. Won't yeah, see. well, that's 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 all out of our control. And like I say, all the teams and and everybody in this in, is, that it's part of this race has done everything everything possible to lower the risk. Obviously, the risk is never zero, but we've put it as low as possible. So, out of our control, and hope for the best for that, eh? Yep. Oh well, you I suppose we should send a cheerio to our sponsor for the show before we go. That's uh, Caitlin Fender Fine Art. Couldn't feel to find out. Feel to find out. We're taking her on as a sponsor. <laughs> well, she's still the kit. Oh yeah, that's right. The merch. Yeah, she's doing yeah. our merch, yeah. and we're going to make millions from our merch. Yeah. Um, I've actually had a couple of people say, "When's the merch coming?" <clears throat> well, well I reckon one. if she can incorporate just L and L or B in it, mm. just the legend or Bell and L or B. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, she get the, the fans. Show, so. Shoot us your ideas, oh. listeners. Shoot us your ideas for a merch. Um, yep. What you want on there, what you don't want on there. Also, remember to go to our Instagram. Uh, there's be a couple of photos back now. The Maldives giveaway. Yep. Um, get on there. Send us some comments. And it's only it's only a couple of weeks until we select the winner for that. So get amongst it. And I'm sure, Daryl, right, if you if you want to go up to the Maldives, uh, Jason, look after you, mate. Just, oh, cool. just simply for coming on this show, mate, for today. I'll definitely, I'll take you up on that one, Jonesy. Yeah, well, well, don't take me up. I can't organise shit. You have to go through Jay's. <laughs> yeah, well, you've just promised. Oh, mate, even okay. if you have to pull it out of this uh, social podcast budget, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> mate, <laughs> we can make it work. Once we start moving some merch and we build a bank, we can do whatever we'll we want. We'll all around. We'll this have our own taking- team. The this social distance pro one. Conti team. Yep, for sure. All right. All right, boys. All right. I'm Should we wrap it up? Look, guys, look, nice at this, look at George. Jumbo Visma everywhere. That is a that is a billboard for the sponsors. That's a sponsor's dream. Yeah. This is, this is why they pay me the big bucks, mate. Real, I'm real just 
Um, actually, I feel like they think I'm a bit of a liability on social media, so they don't encourage me to do anything anymore. But um, yeah, <laughs> they <enough>. give me <laughs> a bed sheet. <laughs> See you every, to your room. Every time we put the show out, I just pray to the podcast gods that the the big boys and the team don't listen to it. But anyway. Oh, yeah. We keep yeah, before, producing before we wrap up, we actually had our first. Um, we had our. We we won't go into it, but we had our first. Um, cease and what, desist. What we, cease and desist order from last week's show. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, experience. But but um, you know what? We, we've actually never had a complaint other than those people that supported um, Julian Assange early on. We've yeah. we haven't oh, had yeah. any. We haven't had any complaints. And but, yeah, sorry, so certainly, certainly got no, one last week. Yeah. Well, no, no, but guys, I'm not connected to anyone, so I'll take the heat. And it's like that scene off um, the Breakfast Club: if you poke the bull, you get the horns. (laughs) So So, everybody, everybody, send complaints through to uh, Jonesy, and he'll 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 filter them through the. And I'll re I'll reroute them to my (laughs) post office box in the the Maldives, and we'll get onto it. Yeah, and yeah, this is obviously obviously a different uh, episode. No Legion of Balin this week. Oh, we're the legend. That's Daryl Impey for coming on. Oh, yeah. uh, no, thanks, guys. Jeez. No, but we'll also it, give him the can also be a balance for but... two months. <laughs> balance yeah. for what? Blowing us off for two months. <laughs> oh, well, he's got a pool to clean, mate. He's busy. That's I'm it. busy, mate. Busy to give Al's a call. Yeah. Right, Good on you, boys. Good luck cool. for the next week. I'll be Let's watching at night. I'll be drinking my dare coffees. Remember, ask your mates, are you okay, particularly if they live in Victoria? Good on you, boys. All right, mate. Love you all. Ta-ta. Bye. See ya.